Hey, what is going on, YouTube? It's the CJ. Welcome back. Episode 38 of the Innovative Marine 75 EXT Refill, also known as the Be Easy Reef. Now, as you guys know, it's a full build series, and it has been a while since I've had a chance to post an update on what's been going on in the reef tank. So, on this video, I figured I would kind of catch you guys up on what's been going on the last few weeks. Well, when I say few weeks, I'm meaning about almost two months of life getting completely busy and crazy and the system literally having to survive on its own so the goal of this video catch you guys up on everything that's happened and also give you guys a quick rundown on what i'm doing on my reef tank to help survive you know the times where you just don't have time for briefing or don't have time to keep the upkeep on your system and that's going to be where the automation is going to come into play on the Be Easy Reef. So let's go ahead and dive into kind of how I have things set up and then we'll kind of talk about what went well, what didn't go well, and hopefully ways to avoid it in the future. Now we're going to start this off with the Dose QD. Now for those who follow me, you know I installed this on the tank a few months ago and its sole purpose has been auto water changes. And honestly guys, this is one piece of equipment that has been working without a hitch. It's been changing three gallons a day pretty much every day for the last few months. The only time it's been offline was when I had to do some servicing on the on the bins themselves, you know, as far as cleaning out any leftover bacteria or, you know, residue or whatever the case may be, just from having a high moisture environment. I literally just transfer the fresh roti water from this bin over to the saltwater bin, throw some salt in, let it keep mixing, and then just let the water changes keep doing what they do. So for now, I feel like this is going to be the ultimate easy way to keep water changes on the tank. And as far as everything else, I have the full Neptune system that is monitoring, controlling, testing pretty much everything that I need done on the Be Easy Reef. Of course, the Helios heater, awesome heater for those that are wondering what I'm using on the tank. Uh, simply Aquatic Skimmer. You see those controls on the control board. And then a little further down below, you will see the Neptune Trident 1 and 2, and 2 meaning the Trident MP, which has been running on the tank for a little over two months now, and it's also performing great. Now, the only issue I've had with the MP has been when I swapped over to my next set of reagents. I have noticed it was a little off, so I have to recalibrate it to kind of get that sorted out. But overall, pretty happy with both Tridents and being able to track the trends on the tank. Now, one of the main concerns, being away from home, I literally was working double shifts for the last few weeks. I was not able to feed the fish manually, so auto feeder is a must. I've been using the Neptune auto feeder for over a year now. And it's just been doing what auto feeders do. You know, it runs on the schedule, drops it in the feeding ring, and the fish get fed. So no real complaints there. One thing I do want to share is going to be the Neptune auto top off. I replaced the hydro fill unit on the system months ago last year and honestly i haven't spoke about it because it has worked flawlessly guys i've not had to worry about anything as far as the auto top off failing or overfilling you know just the additional redundancies that i programmed i've been getting it done and then something else i want to share is going to be the advanced calc stair guys i'm going on three months and i still have not replaced the calc powder in this calc stair so it's either the quality of the powder that is allowing me to get this, you know, length of time without replacing it or the minimal amount of dosing that I actually require to maintain the reef stability and you no know, alkalinity. So those are pluses for me, you know, being busy, you know, also being able to take advantage of this large 15 gallon auto top off reservoir, which literally feeds the auto top off and feeds the Avast Marine Calc Stair. So this gives me weeks of time not having to worry about anything. Now, of course, when you stepped away weeks of, weeks at a time, you definitely have maintenance needs. So, you know, as much as I have the tank set up to be, you know, automatic and controlled from a distance, I still have to get in here, get busy and handle the algae scrub, as you guys can see, growing like crazy. This thing, ever since I reactivated it, has just been putting out algae like crazy. And then of course, uh, the Simply Aquatic Skimmer, which definitely needs to be serviced and cleaned and all that good stuff, but it's pulling out the nasty, icky, stinky stuff that we want skimmers to pull out. So definitely been solid over a year and a half now on the Be Easy Reef. 
definitely something that I would recommend for anyone wondering. Then, of course, the mechanical filtration filter pad completely clogged. And as you can see, the sump has a built-in kind of emergency overflow for these situations. And this kind of lets you guys know how long I've kind of been going without looking down here underneath the tank. So, I mean, that's pretty much the equipment and the rundown on what's running the Be Easy Reef. And as I told you guys, I've been kind of MIA because life just has a way of doing what it needs to do. And a lot of times our reef tanks are the ones that kind of get on the back burner during those times. But that's what we're here for. We're going to document it and kind of share that journey. And that's the point of this channel. And part of that journey is going to be adjustments I've made now that I finally have time to kind of mess with the tank and make some things happen that I wanted, including rehoming the anemones. Well, I ended up moving one anemone to the arch, it walked down, and I added a second anemone, which is the Sherman Rose, which is super bright. It almost makes the normal rose bubble tip look dull. Crazy difference in the colors of those nems. But the clowns absolutely love it. You know, instead of being in front of the MP40 getting blasted for months, they get to lay on their nems like some beds and pillows, and hopefully I'll get some breeding activity soon from them. So besides the anemone changes, we've also had some changes to the right side of the system, specifically the bottom of the right archway. Now, during that last month and a half or so, there was some major losses we're going to discuss a little bit later. So I've started a little coral therapy, rebuilding the right side of the arch, including a brand new torch garden, which is looking pretty damn good, followed by some movement and some height with the Duncans and torches and kind of Ghanis and and just anything I can to kind of help fill out this side of the arch, which has always been a difficult area to fill and keep alive in my system. Now, of course, definitely there's gonna be some bad things to share, including some unknown bacterial issue. I'm not sure what really started this off. My assumption is during the last two months, maybe uh, some misuse of phosphate E, maybe dropped the phosphate a little too fast, kicked off a stress event, but either case, tank pretty much almost got wiped out by a case of brown jelly and serious case of RTN in the reef tank. So I really don't have the real answer for what caused it, but I'm glad that a small chemi clean treatment was able to help kind of mitigate that loss. And then of course, the copper band, this guy, was in the system for six weeks no issues and he ended up perishing so can i give you guys a quick look on how the tank looked at the beginning of this as you guys know we were doing the last ride with the sps on the arch and unfortunately pretty much lost 90 percent of the sps only thing that survived were the anarchopores and a little piece of digi so at this point i'm throwing in the towel guys i am officially throwing in the towel on sps and we're going to come up with a new plan for the archway. Uh, even if that means slowly but surely, you know, adding more soft coils, leathers, you know, hammers, torches, uh, whatever the case may be, the corals that like living in my system is just going to start filling in the arch slowly but surely. And then hopefully, you know, by the time it's all said and done, even though we failed with the SPS, we can still create a very nice looking reef tank. You know, with a dope scape, a lot of movement and just a lot of color and just growth and health is what I'm really looking for. I don't want to go through a situation again to where, you know, life gets busy or the tank doesn't have my eyes on it for weeks at a time. And there is one small hiccup and, you know, SPS decide to kind of all check out. So in this situation, that's kind of where we're at, or at least where I'm at with it, is just kind of accepting my fate. I gave it an honest try and now it's time to kind of move on and part of moving on is going to be taking advantage of the cores that are successful in my tank specifically some of the leathers in my system so as you guys can see went in here took some scissors literally just cut off pieces of leather and kind of remounted them in different spots on the on the tank now the goal is to kind of let these leathers be backdrop corals space fillers and their whole purpose to really to just frame the tank meaning frame the scape as background corals and all the foreground corals be brighter and more vibrant with a dull core behind it and also provide movement 
and as fast as these leathers grow, I really don't see any potential concerns or issues with, you know, having success with them. A lot of people are thinking, man, what are you doing? You know, SPS is the end all be all. Honestly, it was a dream, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the reality to create a dope reef tank. So that's going to kind of be the new direction that we're going to end up going. I mean, there's so many different corals that I've had the chance to try and have success with or failure with to where at this point, I'm really trying to see if I can pull off the next phase of the Be Easy Reef. And then that next phase is going to be turning more into a soft LPS, you know, leather dominated system with maybe a couple pieces of SPS if I kind of feel froggy and want to try it. But overall, we're talking 90, 95% of the easier variety of corals that are going to fill this tank. So what does that mean as far as changes that we're going to need? Well, if you guys have noticed on the right glass, we are now missing the Orbit 4 pump. I ended up removing it because of the system not having the SPS and the high you know, chaotic flow type of environment, I decided to make the tank a little easier. And what I found is having linear flow is more acceptable for an LPS salty system. So I'm still dialing it in and hopefully, you know, it's gonna get the fluffier coils I want in the long term. So now you guys are kind of caught up, or at least got an idea of the new master plan above. Let's take a look down below and finally get to some of this much needed maintenance on the Be Easy Reef, including the Santa Monica Rain 2 Algae Scrubber. And I got to tell you guys, once again, awesome, awesome, awesome growth from this. And it's pretty much consistent every week. I have to harvest it. Otherwise, it's going to completely overgrow. And this is a major factor when it comes to trying to control the nutrients in the system, especially having the heavy bio load that I have in the tank, the amount of food I feed. And of course, you got to make sure you keep the flow right on the algae scrubber and keep feeding the nutrients to that algae. Now, another piece of equipment that I hadn't serviced in the entire year or so on the tank is gonna be the Simply Aquatics DC120 skimmer. Look at this thing, caked up with tube worms and sponges and everything else. And the propeller finally seized. I almost I thought it was broken at first until I realized just how dirty it was. So it was time to disassemble it, you know, get in here, clean out everything I could as far as the sponges, tube worms, everything else, and get this thing back into play. And the great news is, for what I thought was a broken pump, it's spinning just like brand new again. It just needed a little tender love and care. You know, if you don't clean your skimmer for over a year like I did, and it made it this long, that means that's a pretty good piece of equipment. And luckily, you know, after getting my hands dirty, I was able to get this thing back in service, and it was working just like it was brand new again. So. Once again, highly, highly recommending this skimmer for anyone who's looking for a budget-friendly skimmer. That small footprint and gets the job done, this one definitely gets my nod of approval, and we got it back in action. So for as far as everything else, anything else under the sump, we're going to leave as is. You know, besides getting the scrubber back online and replacing the filter floss, everything's back rolling, guys. So this is kind of what the maintenance needs are for the Be Easy Reef literally you know cleaning a scrubber cleaning a skimmer removing a filter pad and refilling the auto water change i gotta tell you guys for anyone who may have just discovered my channel this video or if you've been a long time subscriber one thing you've noticed is you gotta have resolve and a commitment to kind of see it through and be able to bounce back from difficulties life hobby whatever else happens just keep going and that's pretty much what this tank is symbolizing and a lot of people are wondering, hey, is CJ going to keep this tank going over a year? You know, is he going to go two years? Is he going to break it down? You know, what's going to happen? Well, I'm here to tell you guys, this system is here to stay. And we're going to continue to build it out and keep overcoming any of the small issues, large issues, whatever the case may be, and keep chugging along in the Be Easy Reef. And I'm really looking forward to the next stage, meaning moving over and transitioning over to the easier style of reefing to maintain as far as corals and trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the top part of the archway. You know, what kind of easier corals can I put up there and how is the new flow patterns in the system going to affect things 
you know, I reduced the lighting a little bit to kind of fit the LPS range of lighting. I mean, there's so many different things I still have plans for on this tank. And I'm also going to keep relying on the automation and the auto water changes and testing and all of those things to help keep it going during the times life does get busy. So at the end of the day, we're still here. We're still rolling. And I'm looking forward to finishing out this year and seeing where we end up when the tank finally hits that two year mark. And hopefully during this video, I was able to answer some of your questions as far as the equipment, you know, what's been reliable, what hasn't been. And for the most part, I really can't have any complaints. So if you guys got any questions, as always, you can drop a comment down below. And if you want more content, stop by my Instagram, CJ's Aquariums. I post there a lot more frequently. And other than that, hey, you guys know what you can do. Like, comment, subscribe. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing. Peace.